Folks, insanity incoming. Firstly, we need to discuss the massive squeeze season that we've been shouting about that is now officially in full action. Towards the end of this trading week, we saw many massive squeeze runners, and we need to prepare for the ones that I believe will run in this coming week. No guarantees, but I see some more doublers on the way. Secondly, we are going to go through the earnings calendar and market-wide catalysts that dropped this week. Let's get to work. Timestamps down below. Okay, folks, let's go ahead and start with GNS. GNS was the bad, bad girl that started this new wave. If you recall, Thursday morning, we originally briefed on GNS at about 70 cents, and it ran to 215 at highs that day, and then Friday pre-market, it ran to 545, which was a 678% run, briefing price to highs. Obviously, incredible and not something we can expect all the time, but in certain market conditions with the right setups, oof. Oof, can they run. And if you recall, the reason for this run was that GNS had hired a team led by an ex-FBI agent to investigate naked short selling. And this drove attention and got people to recognize the short squeeze setup and how they had likely backed themselves into a corner, which then caused a ton of buying. And then you got a ton of momentum runners. And that culminated in this Godzilla type run. Now, the CEO has made it his personal vendetta to go after short sellers and has been making the rounds across social media. He tweeted a thumbnail recently that said, naked shorts, dear hedge funds, we fight back. And the media is surprisingly covering him as a sort of superhero that is fighting back. Usually the media is against small cap CEOs and only for the short sellers. So it is kind of surprising that this is happening. But nonetheless, it is creating a lot of awareness for the stock. And here's the thing. The rising share price in GNS is baiting the short sellers to sell even more. Here's what the CEO tweeted on Friday. 124 million GNS shares sold short yesterday. Either the clever shorters kept borrowing our 10 million share float, buying back high and repeating every 10 minutes or hashtag naked shorts. They know we're watching, but they just can't seem to help themselves. And that's what I believe is happening as well. Short sellers know that they are being investigated, but the fact that the stock is rising so fast is causing them to want to short more and get more juicy gains when the stock inevitably goes back down, which further amplifies the move and makes more and more people buy in to squeeze out those short sellers before that happens. And the CEO has been retweeting comparisons to AMC and GME because over over 70% of volume on this stock is being run off dark pools. And he's keeping up the attention as of this week. And he tweeted, quote, word keeps spreading. Let's bring the fight to them. First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. And then you win. GNS, MMTLP, CRTD, and then hashtag naked shorts. So for me, I look at this and I see one thing, a super small cap stock with a massive squeeze setup where the CEO is determined to keep bringing attention to short sellers, which means to me that you're going to see massive Massive, massive trading opportunities continue to pop over the coming weeks. And I would be shocked if you didn't see at least one new high this week. I'm sure you're going to see a lot of different sell-offs where the stock goes down 50, 60, 70% in a day, but I would not be surprised to see the momentum overall continue for at least a little while longer. But bigger picture though, when you get a squeezy mix, squeezy run that's this massive, it makes people start thinking about other stocks with similar setups or similar momentum, and then they go and buy those. And that is what catalyzed LYT, HLB, BZ, Cosm, and a few others Friday morning. I want to go ahead and start with LYT. So we briefed on LYT because it had a similar setup to GNS momentum wise and also Kala from a few weeks ago and was showing proof of concept. We briefed on it at about 101 a share and I said that it was trying to break out to new extended hours highs in the pre-market watch at open and it sold off a bit into open but then at open it really popped going from the briefing price of 101 to 227 which is a 124% run briefing price to highs. Absolutely great run, but guess what happened? It sold off afterwards. So please note that zero catalyst runs last indefinitely. They run up fast and they dive just as fast, if not faster. So what I'm saying is that if it was as easy as, oh, this is running, let me buy it and ride the trend, then everyone would do that. But no, not only do you have to be right on the uptrend, but you also have to have some form of risk management. Clear exit point, stop loss, a prenup, whatever you want to call it. I like to think of trades as really short-term marriage. You can have a fun 15 minute marriage and honeymoon, but that doesn't mean you want to lose half your stuff right after, right? Maybe if you're married for 10, 20, 30 years, maybe you can lose half your stuff. But if you're planning on being married only for like 15 minutes, please protect your assets. How you exit a marriage is key, and that means entering the marriage in the first place with a clear plan and some sort of document that you have to hold to that says you get to keep your stuff. And when it comes to the stock market, the best prenup you have is some sort of clearly planned exit point or stop loss or something of that nature. Now, moving forward into this coming week, I'm looking to see if it can retain just a small bit of its previous run. If it can do that, I believe it'll be relevant for rebound opportunities. 
Next, HLBZ. So HLBZ followed Genus's lead and decided to investigate their own naked short selling. We briefed on them at about 18 cents and it ran to just under 37 cents. The company had shown proof of concept in the pre-market momentum-wise and had announced a discontinuation of operations in unprofitable markets. On top of that, like I just mentioned, they followed GNS's lead in investigating short sellers, which is going to drive a lot more interest into the stock moving forward, which I believe is going to show very, very clearly in the coming week or two. That said, from a trading perspective, if you're looking at this for rebound opportunities moving forward, you want to make sure that you see actual proof of concept again. Usually that comes in the pre-market. What is proof of concept? It's actually being able to run solidly above an SMA line or a certain percentage gain in a short period of time. Proof of concept is exactly what it says it is, showing that it can run before you blindly guess that it can run. If something is diving 20% a minute, well, obviously that's not showing proof of concept, right? That's a falling knife. If something has slowed down and all of a sudden is starting to pick up again and going up a little bit, showing a bit of confirmation over an SMA line, then all of a sudden, at least you have some proof of concept, right? And people say, oh, proof of concept. It's not a guarantee that it's going to continue running. Obviously not, but at least, at least you're filtering out the ones that can't even have enough strength to go up a slight smidgen. You are free to buy in something when it's dumping like a dog, but don't complain afterwards that it's continued dumping. Next, cause them a similar deal. They are also in the short seller battle. If you did your homework, you know back on December 9th, they enlisted shareholder intelligence services or share intel to help them identify abusive short selling, which of course set the stage for them to benefit from momentum traders looking to buy short fighting stocks. And we briefed on Cosm at 348-ish on Friday morning and it ran to 642 at highs. And this folks is the power of doing your homework and showing up every day for folks that say, oh, Charlie, you know, there's no value in doing your homework and following trends and looking for patterns because patterns don't 100% repeat themselves. Well, this is what I have to show you. If you can acknowledge what the market is thinking and then look at what the market has done in the past in terms of rallying up similar stocks, well, you can start getting yourselves on the front lines when certain catalysts drop and they start causing stocks to run, do little rally rallitos. And that's exactly how we find all these briefing plays. And building off that, if you are looking for more trade ideas heading into this coming week, here is a cheat sheet. Here are the three major types of stocks and criteria criteria that you need to be looking for. Number one, stocks that announce or have announced short selling investigations, which I believe a lot more announcements are coming because it's an obvious win for companies that do it. Their stock goes up right after. They can explain away their bad stock performance to their shareholders saying it's all the short sellers fault. And so everybody's happy. So it's a win-win if stocks start investigating their short sellers, right? Number two, small caps that consistently hold momentum in the pre-market. A lot of runners stem in the pre-market and then add on after open. Number three, you want to look for any sort of FDA approval or other regulatory biotech catalyst like positive phase trials, those will have extra firepower in this ripe small cap environment. Now, of course, if you'd like us to do the research for you and present you with daily morning briefings each market open morning, we do offer that as part of our overall Zip Trader U program, link down below, and our coupon code to celebrate the GNS run is still active. Coupon code GNS was set to expire Friday, but then GNS ran up to 545 that morning, and it felt really, really disrespectful to cancel its namesake coupon code when the stock was still running and giving more reasons to celebrate. So yes, you can still get 50% off the program if you type in coupon code. GNS, but that will expire shortly. If GNS does not make a new high within the next two days, we will cancel the coupon code, so make sure to take advantage of it while you can. And by the way, this is the full catalyst section from the morning briefing on Friday. Friday's briefing saw a decent amount of runners calculating briefing price to highs. GNS did plus 24%, plus 678% if you include the Thursday morning briefing. Cosm did plus 84%, LYT did plus 124%, Acon did plus 26%, Isa did plus 11%, but it fizzled out way too fast and then dump the rest of the day below the bear criteria, so I consider that a fail. HLBZ did plus 98%. ARVL sold off a bit, then rallied basically flat into open and then sold off. Basically a fail, but I see more opportunity in ARVL heading into this week. But in any case, this is what we found on Friday. Now, of course, we can't promise you that every briefing is going to look like this one or that we'll always be able to find massive 100% plus movers. But what we can promise is that we'll show up every single day the market is open and present you with the best research we are capable of in our briefings. And if you'd like to be a part of that and the overall Zip Trader U program, I will go ahead and put a link to that down below. We'd love to have you. Coupon code GNS. 
Moving on, we've got a busy, busy earnings week. The most notable ones, Synchrony and Logitech on Monday. Tuesday, you got Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, Halle Burton, GE, Raytheon, 3M, Union Pacific, Microsoft, Texas Instruments, Capital One, and Naviant. Wednesday, you got Boeing, AT&T, Progressive, Abbott, Next Era Energy, then Tesla, ServiceNow, IBM, LAM, and Seagate. Thursday, you got the lovely American Airlines, Southwest, MasterCard, JetBlue, Northrop, Alaska, and Visa. Friday, you got Chevron, American Express, and Colgate. So this week, we pretty much have every major industry reporting more finance, payment cards, manufacturing, airlines, oil and gas, even telecommunications. My guess is there will be quite a few bombshells that will rock markets this week. Keep in mind, folks, this earnings season is still very, very young. We've got a lot of the biggest weeks ahead of us. So buckle your seatbelts because it's going to be quite the ride. Have a good one, folks, and we'll see you in the next video.